Okay, so now you know about the Mobius function, we can go straight to analyzing it, okay? Though, in this part, I'm gonna really trace back a lot of history. I may not get the names of the years correct, but I'll still do my best. Okay, so, you know what the Mobius function is. We've got a positive set of integers, okay? In fact, all the positive integers, and we put them inside three hats. 0, minus 1, 1. Okay, and we represent that as mu. So, if we can list out the, the first few results of the Mobius function, okay? This is what we get. 1 minus 1 minus 1, 0, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 0. What do I mean by that? Well, we just simply start with the number 1, okay? 1 goes into hat plus 1, correct? So it goes here. Then the number 2. The number 2 goes into hat minus 1. Why? Because 2 is equals to 2. Uh, odd number of distinct primes. Okay, odd numbers, only one of them. Okay, 3, same, goes into minus 1, and then we got 4, which is 2 squared. Okay, so it's a multiple of a square number. Okay, so it goes into... Um, zero over here. So we keep on applying the Mobius function, so on and so forth, until we get a whole set of, or we apply it to a whole set of positive integers, and throughout the course of history, that's what they did. Can you guess how many integers they applied it up to? You know, that's a lot, okay? About 7 billion, if you know what I mean. Okay, but anyways, now this is the Mobius function. Now we can graph this Mobius function, but you know, it wouldn't be your typical x squared graph, neither would it be your x graph, okay? Now, n, okay, goes, I'll draw it here, okay? So, we just have the axis as 1, 0, minus 1, okay? I hope you can see that, because when we apply the function, we either get any of those three values, okay? So, you know, if the function goes some, something like this, and n is here, as you can see, it would be something like 1, okay? Minus, minus 1, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 1. So if I just make a quick sketch, it would be something like that. Okay, not much use. Okay, it's just a, a bunch of blocks. Okay, you go check my, my website. I got a, a nicer rendition or, ni yeah, nicer rendition of it. Okay, so, you know, neither can we apply calculus. So not much use over here. Okay, though it's just good to know. However, how, what if we take the collimative sum, okay? So, the cumulative sum, meaning that the second term is now this plus this. The, the, this term, the sixth term, is now this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this. So, if I were to represent that, I will represent that as the summation of n equals to 1, okay, of mu n, yeah, of n all the way to x, okay? So, now we are defining the term as x. So, the third term, we will just simply n, n uh, mu applied to 1, mu applied to 2, mu applied to 3, Add them all up, okay, and then that's that's the number that we got, the cumulative cumulative sum, okay, and that we would find out as one zero minus one minus one minus two, okay, minus one, so on and so forth. Now the reason why we can reach beyond the boundaries of one and minus one is because we're taking the cumulative sum, so we're adding now, okay, and there are definitely chances that we can go above the two boundaries, okay. This cumulative sum is a name for it, okay, and the name is. Well, this is the Mobius function. This thing is called the Merton's function, okay? And we represent that as capital M, um, just put capital M in, okay? Merton's function, okay? And the graph of the Merton's function can be quite interesting, okay? So, um, the year was, I believe, it was 1897, okay? And the guy was called Franz Merton's, named after him, okay? Merton's function. Now, you know that the Mobius function had absolutely no geometric interpretation, at least it's difficult, okay? But for the Merton's function, things turn out quite nicely, okay? Now, we can't take small numbers. This one, we need to take large numbers. So, they plotted the Merton's function all the way, or at least the initial graph was all the way to 10, 100,000. Yeah, sorry, it was 100,000 like that. That's a lot. So, apply the Mobius function up to 100,000 and then take the Merton's function by and taking the collimative sum. And if I can draw a graph, okay, I believe this, the axis is 140 over here, the axis over here is minus 140, it, it breaks the boundary of the, the 1 and minus 1, and it went something like that, okay, it's not exactly, you know, it's not even the same, but a rough shape is something like this, okay, it started out small, okay, and then it grew quite big like that. Uh, sorry, yeah. Okay, and, and I'm writing the, the, the jagged lines because that is how actually the function went. It, I mean, if you were to close up on one of these areas, it gets something like that. Okay, 
So, and then as you can see, the, the behavior is erratic, okay? It's definitely not smooth. We are jumping from integers up and down, okay? So, multiple function plotted the graph is something like that. Now, an analysis can be done because at least now we are getting a shape of, of any sort of graph, okay? So the Merton's function is like that. Now, I would like to put my personal anecdote or my personal sharing on this because really, it, it really begs the question, okay? At least for me, when I'm thinking of, of a lot of things, not that, that I think a lot, okay? But when I do think a lot of a lot of things, I always think whether any function can, you can write down any function in, in certainly, uh, in a function. That means if I, sorry, that you can write down any graph in terms of a function. So when you look at the Merton's function, you definitely get something that, oh my goodness, man, I'm not gonna write that out in a function, you know, I'm just gonna take a, a bunch of data and plot it like that, okay? But really, a function as erratic as this, there is a function to it, and that is the Merton's function over here, that, that borrows its concept or is built on the Mobius function. So, quite interesting, okay? That means if I were to draw a function like that, okay, um, just a small one like, like that here, okay? Don't say that that can't be a function. It might be. Okay, and like I said again, if I study mathematics, trust me, I'll update you on it. So, Merton's function, okay, is taking the preliminary sum.